everybody welcome back to my channel welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog we're back to weekly vlogs because vlogmas is officially over it went so fast this year i think it goes fast every year but like i don't know this year it went super fast <laughs> i feel like i was so busy and i was like just running non-stop so today is wednesday december 27th i am off until next year <laughs> Yes, I am one of those nerds who loves that stuff. Like, remember when you were in elementary school and you'd be leaving before Christmas break and your teachers would be like, we'll see you next year because you aren't gonna come back until after New Year's? That's me, I love that. So I am off until January 3rd is my first day back. And I wanna really like get stuff together and get things organized and get a good start to my new year. That's my plan. Yesterday and today, I'm feeling like a little rundown and sinusy, as I'm sure you can hear. Um, I think everything's just kind of catching up to me. So I did try to sleep in a little bit today, but now that I'm up, I'm going to do my to-do list. Um, Kay on Heart Breathings is doing sprints this morning until 11, so another hour and a half. So I'm gonna, I'm kind of like easing into it. I was just doing some uh, photo edits and I'm gonna jump in and start doing like productivity kind of sprints for the next um, 90 minutes of sprints with her. So I'm eating shrimp dip and coffee for breakfast, living the dream. Layla Grace is already rowdy. We're off to a good start here. So uh, once I start working on my to-do list, I will check back in and show you. You playing with your toy? What's your baby doing, huh? What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Look at you. What's that? Good boy. Let me see. You want the cookie instead? Let me see. This is a good boy. Oh my goodness, look at your little shark teeth. Look at your little shark teeth. You're so cute. You're so perfect. Do you like the pets? Do you like the pets? Yes, you do. Yes, you do, huh? Good morning, everybody. It's now Thursday. Welcome back. <laughs> I really didn't do very much yesterday. So, <sighs> briefly, my mom and I decided that we are going to go to Vegas and Death Valley for a couple of days in two weeks. It's a whole thing. I'll explain it more when I get upstairs. Um, but that kind of took up like my whole day yesterday. So I, I wasn't feeling 100% yesterday too. I've been having some like sinus stuff going on. It's very annoying because I have a lot to do and I feel like I'm just, my body is a little run down after the last month of crazy, I want to say month, but November was also crazy. October was also crazy. September was okay. No, it was flu season. Yeah, that's right. Okay, right. Well, so I don't remember when things weren't crazy, but they're crazy. So I'm working on my get your shit together list. And I did work on that yesterday. I'm putting that together and trying to like look at everything. So I'm kind of doing if you give a mouse a cookie, which is like, if you're not familiar with that book, go look it up. And if you are a grown-up who was recently diagnosed with ADHD tell me how you've identified with that book your entire life not realizing that this mouse has some characteristics that you the adult with ADHD who was not diagnosed as a child also had so I need to do my nails I want to do start working on my HB90 and my goal setting I have to do my nails because they're kind of chipping in a few places and it will bother me the entire time that I'm writing by hand if I can see this. But before I do my nails, there's some stuff in the kitchen that I wanna do that I should do before I do my nails because it's going to, it's like scrubbing the, the counter. Cleaning the kitchen, the stovetop, is like my least favorite. I would rather do the dishes, I would rather do the hand washing, all of that. So here's what the plan is right now. Okay, I'm gonna put some music on. Oh my god, it's 11 o'clock. I've been um, watching some YouTube videos and editing some pictures and I just had breakfast. So uh, here's the three things that we're gonna do, right? Well, maybe it's more than three things. Scrub the stovetop. I hate doing it. It hurts my hands. It stresses me out. I need to get it done. Clean this countertop. We have like two, we have to finish our last three days of cheese advent, which I'm gonna do probably today around three o'clock. So I don't wanna necessarily put those away, but we'll see. And then do the cabinet in there. Here's what the cabinet in there looks like. And then I have to tidy Layla's situation over here. Oh, look, Clarence is on the back porch. Is that Clarence? Maybe that's somebody else. Hi, buddy. 
Hi, little friend. Oh, hello, you're so cute. Oh yes, that's good. Stay in the back and don't come under the front and come in the house again. Anyway, so I have to tidy Layla's. This is like all overflowing with stuff. And some of it I take to the shelter, like I just took some today. And I wanna, I wanna get this all sorted out. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. This is the, the grand overview. Ah, okay. And the next time you see it, it's gonna look like I just did so much and it's gonna take me the next 24 hours to finish this. All right, hour and a half later. There we go. The stove, there's stuff stuck on it. I tried reading something on Good Housekeeping and doing what Good Housekeeping told me it didn't work. So, did the best I could, but it looks pretty good. I mean, compared to what it looked like before, right? Right, progress, okay. I also did some of the wine inventory that I was working on. And yeah, getting lots done, getting lots of things done. lash touch-up time thank goodness because I have one on each eye that is pointing the wrong direction and I can see it every time I turn my face so here's our before all right and here's the after they look so nice hello everybody I have not checked in in ages and I know that I don't know, I've been very busy the last few days, so I have not really been uh, checking in. I think I checked in on Friday. Yeah, that was yesterday. Okay, better than I thought. Um, it is Saturday night right now, and we are headed to the Upstage Reunion, which is an annual event. If you are new here and you're not from Pittsburgh, I'm trying to find a couple way to sit. Okay. If you are new here and you're not from Pittsburgh, the Upstage was our like dance club. So there was the upstage, which was the dance part, and then there was Club Laga, which would bring in like live bands. And that was our college safe place. So once we all turned 20, like Laga was 18 and up, but um, the upstage was 21 and up. So once you turned 21, it was like where you went. So Thursday night was 80s night. Saturday, I cannot remember at this point if it was Friday or Saturday was ceremony, which was like the goth night. I did not go to that one as often as I wanted to because I really didn't have any friends in the scene who would go with me. So I think I only went once, um, but we would go to 80s night every week, like almost every week. And it was like a place where you could like be yourself and be happy and whoever you wanted to be and everybody was accepted and great music. And so now there's husband, he's coming back in, hello to stop the ATM because the event that we are going to tonight is cash only. So uh, the upstage closed, what, 2006? Yeah. Before we moved to LA, right? Yes. Yeah. So it closed in 2006. It's now like, a, it was a grocery store. I don't know if it still is or not. But um, every year, the last like Friday or Saturday of the year, we have an upstage reunion. And this is the seventh annual upstage reunion. We missed 2020 obviously for obvious reasons but the old DJs come back and the old bartender staff comes back so anyway we did this annual reunion and it used to be at Spirit which is not my favorite location but it was upstairs which is the bigger dance floor and then last year and this year has been a Cativo which is like a really small dance floor knock at drinks cash bar only I want to support this place but like it's just the vibes are off so but anyway that's where it is tonight so that's where we're headed right now so we're gonna go dancing it started at eight and one of the regular djs easy lou who was like our 
80s night DJ like that we all loved and adored. Um, he's out this year because he had to have knee surgery because we're all getting old and that's what happens. And so there's some other DJs, uh, Callisto, DJ Callisto, who is Tara. She will be here. She was one of the regulars at uh, upstage and she's amazing. So she's good. Doug, Metropolitan Doug will be here, who we know. And I don't know the other people very well, so we'll see. Um, so I'm not feeling the vibes like I normally do, but it's still gonna be a good night. We're gonna have fun and we're gonna dance and transport back to that moment for just a little bit. literally dying the next day so we were at the upstage right and so they're playing all these great songs and songs that I love and like for years for some reason I have thought that the song how soon is now by the Smiths which was like an 80s night staple at the upstage I have thought that it sounds that the sound that that song makes sounds like this ride from Kennywood called the Baron Curve it's I think they it's no longer there I know they took it down I don't think they brought it back anyway I have been convinced for years and so every time that song comes on I'm like it's the Baron Curve song so let me show you what I'm talking about here all right thank you mr. Noah goes rar <laughs> that's who's uh, channel this is here that I'm gonna show you this is the Baron Curve it's like this little so like the cars go around you'll see but the sound that it makes is this that which is like terrifying while you're on it one of my favorite rides. I was so bummed when they took it out. It's like, I don't know, it's one of those rides where like the centrifugal force? Centripetal pulls you into the center, centrifugal pushes you out to the, whatever. Whatever. It is too late at night for me to think of physics, but it like keeps you like in your seat even though you're going around these curves and you should be feeling like you're falling out. I don't know, I love that ride. But that sound reminds me of this song by the Smiths. Please don't come for me, Morrissey, because I just don't have your energy, but, uh... Does this not sound... That sound... Sound like... That sound? <laughs> anyway, it always makes me think... That song always makes me think of the Baron Curve. The Baron Curve always makes me think of that song. And so um, my friend Christian, who could not come that night, he was he was trying to come out dancing, and then he was like, "I am too old and it's too cold. I'm not going out." So he was like asking me for updates. He's like, "What song are they playing?" And I was like, "They're playing the Baron Curve song." And he's like, "The what?" And I was like, "We have had this discussion on the Baron Curve before." And he's like, "What song are you talking about?" And so I was like, "Let me send it to you." So I sent him a video clip. Did not listen to how my voice sounded until the next day because it was so loud there I couldn't hear me recording it and the next day when I was like listening to the playback I was like that is my most Yenzer moment. I was like the Baron curve <laughs> Anyway back to the vlog. That was my explanation of why I Associate how soon is now with the Baron curve and vice versa Here's Clarence 
And he's like, I need one more meal before the end of 2023. This is my farewell to 2023 meal. Don't you put your head in there, you little shit. Oh my God, he's so cute. But uh, you see that hole there. If you're new to the channel, he made that hole earlier this year so he could climb into the house. And then he became terribly upset that he did that. Had a lot of regrets. I guess he's gone now. And uh, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Hello, everybody. It is New Year's Eve, my favorite night of the year. We're going to go to dinner. First, we're going to have our traditional Cosmopolitan at August Henry's to kick off the night. We checked into our hotel. It's a bit of a mess. But we're good. We're there. The dogs are there. Mom's there. I'm going to go get something to drink. Wonderful 2023 and an even better 2024. Cheers! Too much time when we were done early. Where's that baby? There she is. There she is. You got steak. All right, dinner is over. It was great. We checked on the dogs, gave Layla some steak, and it is time for the parade. come true. I'm so excited. Look at these little flappy birds practicing their routine. It's so cute. Oh my god. Look how good they are. Look at all the little flappy birds. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited. I'm inside my puppet. This is what it looks like to be inside.
Hey, little tiny ball. Oh my goodness, have you been sleeping? Have you been sleeping? Let me see your face. Hi. Hi. Are you being party animals? Oh. No, <laughs> what are these party animals up to? <laughs> Layla Grace. <laughs> It is so smoky now. <laughs> the air is not good quality tonight. Why are you staring again? Why are you doing that? Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. It's 2024. This is the least flattering life they could have found, but here we are. Why are you staring at me? Why are you staring at me? Lily. Lily, are you going to be a good girl? Does your resolution say, be a good girl? Lily. Did you have to leave your village? <laughs> Did you put your babushka on and leave your village to come to the new world? Yes, I know. Very struggle. Struggle is so real. It's so hard to be in my grace right now. Hello, everybody. I'm like dying because I'm chopping onions. Literally chopping onions. Not one of those things where like you watched a sad dog video and then you say you're chopping onions. I'm literally chopping so many onions. It's Monday night, New Year's Day. This day has been a total mess. Sometimes I feel like that's more fortuitous than a good New Year's Day. I feel like if it starts off chaotic, then it's just going to get better from there. But anyway, I am starting our annual kielbasa and kraut that we make every, well, I make every year. Um, here's the recipe. So it's a good, strong Ukrainian meal. I need to find a wine to put in the fridge, I just realized. So, I get the kielbasa, actually the kielbasa is Polish, it's from s and Polish Deli down on the Strip, which you saw the other day, I think. And then we always use Miller Lite. You can use white wine or another light beer, but we always use Miller Lite because that was my dad's favorite beer. And it takes forever, but it's so delicious. So I'm starting on that now and I was cutting this like massive amount of onion and I just cannot get my eyes to get their life together. <laughs> it's been a day, y'all. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, January 2nd. Filling my water bottle, doing it right. I had a really rough day yesterday. I just, I don't know, the whole day started off wrong. First of all, y'all know, if I don't have alone time in the morning, I'm an absolute bitch to be around the entire day. It sets me up for failure. It's not a good scene. And yesterday morning, you know, it was, we were we got a hotel room downtown, and so we were all three in the same hotel room. And I tried to like go. I got the suite because the suite was like ten dollars more a night, and I was like, "This way I'll have my space in the morning." And everybody, as soon as I got up, they were like, "Hi, what's up?" And I was like, "We're not doing this." So it was like, everybody just go away for a little while and just like let me have some time. But I still didn't have enough time. And then I was like, "Well, you know what? When I get home, I'll have time to myself." And then I don't know what went wrong with the valet situation. So we stayed at the Drury downtown. 
and that was our first time staying there. I mean, I stayed at Drury's because I love them. Everybody was so nice. Like the staff was so nice. Why is my phone like foggy in this lighting here? Hold on. So, but they were just like, I don't know what happened, but the entire lobby was full. I tried to take a video so you could see, and that was like, didn't even do it justice because there was a whole another two rooms that people were in. So we waited almost two hours for our car from the valet. You had to do valet parking. There was no self park option. And it was kind of hectic and crazy when we came in on Sunday night, but it was maybe like 20 minutes to get in and not that, so not that bad. And we thought it was mostly because there was this person who was getting like, I don't even know how many rooms, like it must've been a group that they were checking in. So anyway, it was almost two hours of a wait. And like Layla was getting all fussy and we'd already checked out of the room. Like I didn't, if I had known it would have been that long, I don't know what we would have done. But anyway, it was like, I can't even remember what time. Let me think about what time we got home. So I just checked the timestamp on like the last picture that I took when we were there. So we got home around one o'clock. I had been planning that we'd be home like 10.45. So, but then like, and it was just emotionally draining because we didn't know what was going on. Some people's keys got lost. Like there was so much chaos and like there weren't any updates. So it wasn't like you knew like, okay, there's 10 cars in front of me. Okay, there's five cars in front of me. You know, like you were just like waiting and not knowing what was going on. And I felt so bad for the people working there because listen, I understand when you work for a company and they don't always like let you have enough staff that you think you need and that kind of stuff. I mean, I have no idea what it was and they were so nice and they were trying really hard and I could see that they were like working their hardest, but it was just something fell apart in the planning. So I felt bad for them. They were really nice. We did go up and talk to them and we were like, listen, we've been waiting almost two hours. Like, can you waive our valet fee? In the end, um, they like, husband was like, is there anything we can do? Can I like go to the garage myself to save you guys a trip back? And they were like, well, yeah, we'll escort you to the garage. So that's what they did. Um, they went with him and then he took the car out and brought it back. And so we were like, is there any way you could like waive the um, ballet fee since we had to wait so long? And then also like we ended up having to go get the car ourselves. And they were so nice that we were like, absolutely. They waived the ballet fee. They're like, we'll also waive your pet fee because this was unacceptable. And I'm like, we didn't have to do that. And they're like, and here's a voucher for one free night's day. I was like, okay, you really didn't have, that was like above and beyond. I just didn't want to have to pay $37 for a valet that we waited two hours for and had to go get the car anyway. <laughs> like they were so nice. And I was like, I said, I'm so sorry. We are not trying to be like rude, complaining people. I work retail, I work in healthcare. Like I understand. I just was like, can you take those $37? Like if it had been $10, it would have been one thing, but $37 was a lot. So um, they were so nice. And they're like, we really had a plan and it just fell apart and we feel so bad. And I was like, yeah. So, um, you know, that worked out in the end. I mean, that went above and beyond. Like, I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? And they're like, yes, absolutely. I'm like, okay, okay. So TLDR, juries are the best even when they're chaotic. But we got home and I was just like, exhausted because it was emotionally draining to be like worried and wondering and not knowing and like that kind of stuff not knowing and waiting on something is is very stressful to me so i had a hard time getting back into like thinking about things and um ended up taking a nap and like then i had to make dinner and i just like i couldn't get in a groove yesterday and i was like feeling sad and down because the holidays are over and like I don't know, that's like the thing that activates my grief because I start thinking about like, well, another holiday done. How many more holidays do we all have together? You know, like, uh, it's just like places you don't want your brain to go and your brain's like, girl, I went there. So I had a rough day yesterday. Then I like went down a rabbit hole hyper fixating on some stupid shit. Then I had trouble sleeping because that stupid shit was scary. And now here we are today, <laughs> getting a later start than I wanted. But I was up late because I couldn't sleep. And we're gonna just do our best to move forward. That's the best we can do. That's what we're going to do. All right, I have spent the last like three hours learning how to do Notion on my computer. I watched Sarah's. I watched Sarah's video walkthrough, which was really helpful. It's not super intuitive, but now that I've got it set up, I'm like so excited about it. So I'll show that later today. Um, I always make this recipe for brandy slush. It was a recipe that is from probably the 70s. My mom used to make it in the 80s for New Year's and they made like a non-alcoholic version of it for us kids. And then when I turned 21, I was like, I wanna try the regular one. But it's an old recipe, like picture it in your, my old vintage cookbooks that I'm obsessed with. 
and my mom used um, apricot brandy. For me, that's a little too sweet, so I just use regular brandy. But I usually make it for New Year's. I make it like on the 30th or the 31st, and I just didn't have time this week. So I'm gonna make it today, because I wanna have it for the first, I like to have it like as my little, or watching a movie or whatever for the whole first week of the year at least, and then I make it for a couple friends and give them uh, jars of it. So I am headed, I went to make it last night, I was gonna make it because it has to freeze. So basically like you make the recipe and then it freezes and then it's like a slushy and then you put ginger ale with it. Well, I went to make it last night and I did not have enough brandy. I only use brandy for this <laughs> exclusive purpose once a year. So I am in my jammies going up the hill to the liquor store to get the brandy so that I can make it because I want it to freeze because one of the people that I always give a jar to is our friend Tina and we're gonna see her tonight so I'm like, I gotta do it, so I had to stop. I got through most of Notion. There was a couple things I didn't add dates on, but that's okay. And so now I'm going up there, and I'm kind of ignoring my task blocks for the day because today is kind of like an anomaly. I'm not gonna do this going forward, but right now, doing what we can, we're doing the best that we can. So we're going to the liquor store with jammies on. All right, I've got a different kind of brandy this time. The E and J very special brandy because this one says that it has let me see my back here light bodied crisp refreshing with hints of apple toasted oak and vanilla so the original recipe as i said is from like the 70s and so it's a very 70s like sweet drink recipe i don't i'm hit or miss about sweet i like a little bit of sweetness is fine but like so the original recipe was with the jacqueline's apricot brandy which is like so sweet so I usually use like, I don't know, I don't know anything about brandy, Paul Mason brandy, I guess. Um, but this time I saw this one, they have like a, one of their special features. I mean, it's still like, this is not like, a rapper's not gonna sing about this, how great it is. But I was like, ooh, apple, that might like bridge the gap between a regular brandy and the really sweet apricot brandy. So we're gonna try it, we're gonna do a science experiment. The time intensive part of this is that you have to boil seven cups of like water and then two cups of water to put tea in so you have to have boiling going and it's just then you have to wait for it to cool down because the boiling stuff has to be frozen and that's why this is so time intensive and i wanted to start it last night because then you can freeze it overnight and it's like perfect but we're doing the best we can all right so i haven't really done a solid post yet about my hb90 class and like what i'm getting out of it what i'm working on but I, the one thing I was like nervous to do about the HB90 course was number one, not feeling like I had goals. Number two, worrying that if I hit my goals, then I'll just be like, what is my life? <laughs> Which I know is silly, but brains, come on now. And number three, I, I don't love the Kanban board and I know that's a big part of it. So I got to the Kanban board step yesterday. Sarah explained that if you are not comfortable with putting a bunch of sticky notes on your wall, which I don't really have a space that would be, it would be in sight and hold on. the brandy slush is in the freezer, by the way. Um, anyway, I just finished that, did my intentions and reflections, and now I'm back up here to start working on setting up my bullet journal for the year, which is part of what's on my notion. So I don't really have a space that I could put up a Kanban board in here because my wall space is kind of taken up by other stuff. And I don't like love the idea. I don't know. I was worried about it. I felt like it was going to stress me out more than it was going to help me. And so I posted like before I signed up for the course and multiple people were like, I don't do a Kanban board. You can do a digital, you can do all these other things. So I guess the one app is called Trello. And actually it was funny because this morning and I was taking the course, husband was like, I hear you're learning about Kanban boards. I use those at work all the time. I can help you. And I was like, I do not want your tech boy Kanban board. I want, if I'm going to do one, I want planner girl Kanban board. So, but I thought it was funny. Apparently that's a big thing in tech that they use this app called Trello and they do Kanban board style stuff for their, their project planning. But I was like, oh, I just don't like it. I don't know. So the other thing that Sarah mentioned was this notion. I've seen um, Keisha from A Little Spark has used the notion and she's put it on her, I think it was on her Instagram. I don't think she has a YouTube. Maybe she does. I don't know. She does a lot of Instagram stories. If you're not following her, I really like her um, stories. She has posted her notion on there and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then Sarah Cannon has posted hers and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then once I got to this Kanban board stage, I was like, 
I want to do a physical Kanban board. So if you're not familiar with the Kanban board, it's where you have the board that's split into three sections to do, doing, and done. If you follow planner channels at all or goal setting channels at all, a lot of people use this. And so you put the standard way to do it is you make sticky notes of all the tasks that you have to do for each of your goal, three goals that you're working on, and you put them in the to do. And then as you start working on them, they move them to the doing. And when they're done, you move them to the done. It's very motivational in the way that if you are the kind of person who likes to check the box and be like, look what I did. And then it's a visual representation of like, look how far I'm going. Look at my progress. All these things have moved from the top down to the middle or the bottom. But I just don't have a space where I could envision it working for me. And I don't know what it is, but I just like, it's not for me. I like watching other people's videos and seeing how they do it. But for me, it doesn't feel like my brain works right with it. So. Sarah said that she has set her notion up to do this. So I decided to try it. I looked at Trello first and I was like, it was very like techy and that's not me. And I was like, notion, I've seen you can customize that with like pretty designs. And I was like, okay, I've seen two people who are planner people, Keisha and Sarah, both do it with like an aesthetic look. And I'm like, this is more my speed. So I spent like two hours today, which is four task blocks if you're keeping track at home and setting it up and I am obsessed with it. So the first thing is you can pick this like little background here. This was a pre, um, it's called a cover. It's like Facebook, like a cover. I, this was a preset Joshua Tree one. There's like a thing and you can search for search terms. And so this came up and I was like, that's perfect. And then you can put this little gif over here and it's this Joshua Tree coming in and out of, well, into the distance and out of the distance. It's cute. And then you can put this little time on here and calendars. And then I put Richard Simmons here because it's me, but, you put all your goals in here and you can organize them. Let me show you. So I just have it filtered to show this current week stuff, but you make this spreadsheet with your goals and then you color code it. So like goal one is orange. My goal two is pink and my goal three is, oh my God, there's a lot in goal two. I chose to break it down. My goal three is blue. I chose to break it down like super granular to help me really visualize how much I have to do. I try to make it like either tasks that aren't that long or tasks that would be like one task block. Like sometimes if I didn't know, like one of my goals is related to tidying up my office and getting it to be a more like a space where I will feel more inclined to be creative and it will be like better, less cluttered, better brain space for me. So like these are things that like are just out, but they have a place to go. That's what I'm calling it. Office stuff with a home. But I don't know, like, I didn't want to break it down too granular. So I just said, it's going to take me two task blocks to do that. So um, sometimes I did it like that, but sometimes I had more specific steps. And so, but like, this is all my stuff. And I'm like, I know it's a lot, but this is like 13 weeks of plan with me's. And I put dates on things and like, ah, I feel so like clear about stuff right now. I have never felt this clear and organized about stuff. So it's pretty exciting. So I'm gonna start working on some of these annual setup things. I put start dates, like I made it this far with start dates and then I kind of was like, these are like for future, for setting up my monthly stuff later. So I don't have to worry about that. And then I gave like dates on these. I didn't put the dates in here yet. I was like, when I have a little bit more time, I can go in and finish filling that out. I have all the like stuff that's happening in the next two weeks on here. and other stuff scheduled out because like 13 weeks of plan with me 13 weeks of vlogs but I just feel like this makes so much sense and why have I waited so long to learn this but you know what I learned it now so I'm going to start setting up some of my bullet journal stuff and it'll be interesting to see because I estimated how long these things will take me it'll be interesting to see how long it really takes me so let's, that's part of what I'm doing here is trying to sort that out do you want to come help me I have to do my goal planning did you know mommy made an entire bag of cookies just for baby at the desk so that you can have cookies whenever you're helping me? Do you think you'd like to help right now? Do you think? Yeah? Can you get out of your bed or are you stuck? Are you stuck in your bed? Are you stuck in your bed? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Get out of the bed. Get out of the bed. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. Oh my goodness. Hello everybody, I'm gonna close the vlog out here. My hair is so big and full of secrets this morning. This is what happens when I sleep on it wet. It just got very large and in charge, I don't know. So anyway, thank you for spending the first few days of the new year with me, I guess technically it was two days, yeah. And New Year's Eve, 
and maybe my new year is off to a little bit rockier start. I was hoping to be like really on top of things and it's not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Had a wonderful new year's Eve. The parade was so much fun. Oh my goodness. I have a feeling when I'm going back to edit this tomorrow that I may have to add something in. Cause I feel like there's stuff I didn't talk about that I needed to talk about. Okay. Yes. I'm realizing I did not actually, I talked about the parking situation and how we got home so late, but that didn't talk about new year's Eve itself. So the parade was so much fun. I will definitely do that again next year. It's just a blast. You put your big giant weird puppet on. It's a backpack as you saw me like getting into the apparatus there. And then you're assigned your group and whatever your music is. And so our group, that the, the band that was with us was really good. So that helped because then you could dance the whole time. And then, of course, everybody wants to, like, say hi and give high fives. And so you're, like, you know, walking around and you're like, Happy New Year! And I was... New Year's Eve is my favorite day of the year. Well, okay. My top three favorite days of the year are October 1st, New Year's Eve, and my birthday, October 4th. <laughs> So, and not in that order. They're they're like my they're like you can't choose your favorite child. I can't choose my favorite day. All three of them are my favorite day equally. Anyway, I feel like on New Year's Eve we are the closest to our truest selves that night for some reason. And so I get very emotional every year and I just I love it. So it was like extra special because I was doing the parade and I love the parade and I've always wanted to do that and I had never been able to before and I don't know. It was just magical. So anyway, the parade was wonderful. However, it was about 37 ish degrees and it was raining and it was this cold, damp, nasty rain. And then when you're breathing in that costume, as you saw, like the, the video that I showed of like what it looks like to look through it, you're breathing through that lame material. And so it's like basically a humid as hell inside of there. And so when we finished, and then like I changed out of my costume and we went back to the hotel to check on the dogs. I could not stop like coughing. My whole chest was on fire. Like my lungs were just like not feeling right. So we were going to go out and see, um, they put a new light display on the sister bridges. We have these three bridges that are sixth, seventh and ninth streets. And they're called the sister bridges. One is the Clemente Bridge, one is the Warhol, Andy Warhol Bridge, and one is the Rachel Carson Bridge. And they go, they span from the north side to downtown. And the Clemente Bridge has been closed for almost two years for maintenance, and they reopened it. And so then they put this new light installation on it that's really pretty, and I wanted to see that. And then I wanted to see the Tree of Fire, but the Tree of Fire was like not working the whole night anyway, because we walked past it and it was not functioning. So I don't know what was going on with that. We didn't end up going back out. So... We, um, we, we were going to go back out and see all this stuff. And I was like, I just don't feel well. So that was the nice thing about having the hotel downtown was that we could just like hang out and chill out until I felt better. And I drank water and like, you know, try to like calm my lungs down a little bit, but it was worth it still because it was such a great time. But, um, the weather was like, if it had been a little bit colder and been snowing, I think it would have been a lot better, but because it was raining and humid, it was like not the stuff. So, and then, um, just before midnight, my mom was like, we got to go see the fireworks. We have to see the fireworks. And I was like, okay, fine. So like we went out in our jammies, walked back downtown. We didn't make it all the way over to the big, the, the actual like area where they were doing the fireworks. Um, but you could, we could see it for where we were. So that was good. Cause my mom can't walk as far as us. And so that was like probably as far as she could walk because she'd been walking back and forth all night. So it worked out. We were able to see a pretty good view. It wasn't like the perfect view with the tree and everything like we usually go see, but it was, it was really nice too. So, um, yeah, it was a great night all around and it seemed like a little less going on at first night than normal. Cause we go every single year and there were like less things to do. It seemed like less bands playing. Cause like the river city brass band often plays. And then there's the, um, the bagpipers, the Balmoral, I don't know, probably not pronouncing that correctly. Um, they have not been there the last couple of years. I don't know what's going on, but the parade was wonderful. And then we were first night friends. So like you can go to first night, I think it's free now, but they have a thing called first night friends, which you pay an extra fee for. But then the O'Reilly theater is open with like a full snack bar. I mean, they have hummus, they have cheese board, they have pierogies, meatballs. I forget what else they had. So we went in there and I was like not feeling well from that's when I was starting to feel bad from breathing that air. And so I didn't eat anything, but my mom was like, this food's amazing. She was so excited. And then they give you these little, um, 
coffee cups, like travel mugs, and then you can get hot chocolate or you can get coffee. So they were doing, it was so cute, the guy who was, the upstairs level is like the dessert. So they had brownies and then they had the coffee or hot cocoa. And he was like, we're doing mocha javas tonight. And it was like hot coffee with like a splash of the hot chocolate in it. So it was really tasty. So that was nice. That really helped my like lungs calm down was the, the warm drink there. So we went and did that. And then, um, like I said, we just hung out and then, and then we got a pizza. We walked back and there was a pizza place open and I was like, this was meant to be. So I think next year we will definitely stay downtown again, probably at the Drury again, because it was a really great experience aside from the parking. But you know, there's only so much you can do like that. I felt bad for the employees. I didn't blame them for that. That's out of their hands. What happened? So anyway, that was the wrap up of New Year's Eve. And so back to closing out the vlog. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This is my first vlog of 2024. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you are new here. And as always, my friends, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And I will see you in next week's vlog.